Welcome once again to Smoke and Mirrors. Smoke and Mirrors. <laughs> smoke and Mirrors. Mirrors and Smoke. <laughs> and Smoke and Mirrors. And Smoke and Mirrors. <laughs> and here we are on Moonbase. Yep, our secret underground moon base. Alpha. Moon base alpha. Moon base beta, maybe. Beta. <laughs> this is the beta version. <laughs> our alpha was destroyed in a huge solar flare. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it's strange. There was there, there was this big explosion, and moon base alpha wasn't there anymore. It's like it was flying off somewhere in space. I don't know. I'm, I wonder if that was one of their bright ideas. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so they left us with an episode. Yes. And this is chronologically episode seven. Yes. But broadcast episode broadcast, it was yes. five. Episode five. Episode yes. five. I believe. And um, we're going to have to go back and, and double check because I was actually using the wrong disc for this. It's the problem with having a show that's in diff two different orders. Uh, but I believe we are still in the correct broadcast order. Um, so, yeah, this is the baseball episode of Harley. Baseball. Baseball is big in Japan. It is. And here in the U.S., of course. Right. Yeah, mom, apple pie, and baseball. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, in Japan, it's been around for quite a while. Isn't yes, there, it, um, yeah, it came over in the late 1800s, I believe. Um, so they had it almost as long as we have uh, over here in America, and um, so it, it is a absolutely a national pastime. High schools, college, all you know, teams. Um, highly paid players. I think we get some stuff. of our players from there, and uh, some of our players go over there and play. Yes, absolutely. There have been some famous movies about that, too. <laughs> they have. <laughs> <laughs> so Haruhi comes in and announces that she is going to... Guess what we're doing today, guys? We're doing <laughs> baseball! <laughs> Whoa, okay. All five of us? I guess, yeah. The <laughs> team doesn't make... <laughs> and so we get to see how Haruhi deals with the SOS Brigade when it's just her. When she's just, um, you know, walking in on them in a regular normal day and <laughs> announces what they're going to do. And we see that Yuki, of course, just sits in a corner and uh, just kind of does her thing. Um, yep. Yeah, yeah, mm, mm, love that. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, Kion <laughs> asks the sensible questions, which Haruhi completely ignores. <laughs> and Itsuki wants to go along with it because he's kind of the observer. And Mikuro gets completely steamrollered by Haruhi. She, uh, accurate term, accurate term. Yeah. And she's stroking her hair. She's like, oh! I love that little thing with the she ear. She bites her ear. <laughs> and you know what happens if you don't? <laughs> Adorable and abusive all at yes. the same time. So Cute but strange but cute. <laughs> exactly. So they're going to play... Baseball, apparently. So and they need some more team members. They sure do. So the brigade members announced that they're going to... So I just love that uh, Haruhi just sort of drops Mikuru on the floor and walks over. <laughs> and um, unceremoniously. And so they all bring in various of their friends to help them out with the baseball game. And so we see a couple of them um, come in, uh, starting with... <laughs> just sitting there. Just sitting the there. Doing her best. Oh, look at her uniforms behind her. Yeah, <laughs> see, see a bit of all of her uniforms. Um, oh. <laughs> so, of course, they, they, they go over, they, they tr they're trying to... Um, practice. Practice. You know, they got their... Uh, the baseball team is, as we mentioned, um, the baseball team has their practice time. It's a big deal. We want to use this field and the mm -hmm. equipment. Right. And we're going to bat a thousand, <laughs> a thousand pitches here. We're going to, a thousand hits, I think she said. A thousand hits. Yep. So that's ambitious for somebody who's not playing baseball. No, just, no. Okay, I'm going to just go and hit a thousand times. <laughs> but we remember from episode one that Haruhi tried out for every team. Yeah. And they all wanted her, but she walked off every team. She she liked to dabble with clubs, but mm -hmm. not stay with clubs. But so clearly she has some skills. She has some skills. She's impressive. Exactly. So, uh, so <laughs> Haruhi brings over Mikuru and used her short skirt as okay. her secret weapon. <laughs> and uh, uh, was able to convince the the team to let them come over there. Oh. And uh, so we, get, we have to see what all of the the SOS Brigade are like in here. Uh, Mikuru is completely scared out of her mind. Um, uh, Itsuki is pretty good, actually. Yeah. Kion doesn't know what he's doing. Yuki just sits there and blocks anything that's about to hit her. 
Um, absolutely minimal m- not, movement. Not catch, just block. Right, just, just block. Let the glove block it. It <laughs> falls to the ground. <laughs> and uh, poor Mikuru there is uh, just getting hit by the ball. Him. With the glove on her head exactly. to protect your skull. And here we see Kion, and I think, again, it's sort of an interesting moment where uh, Kion sees this and gets a little angry. Hmm. And he walks over and grabs Mikuru and, and drags her off. And Ooh, here he's. Reason. Right. Uh, and here he's defying Haruhi very, this very is, directly. This isn't productive for the team, for her, mm-hmm. for anybody. So he says, okay, we're done. At which point, Haruhi drafts the rest of the baseball <laughs> players in. Okay, you guys that. are going to take the rest of these hits. <laughs> feel this, feel this, feel this. And she keeps hitting things, and uh, oh. <laughs> so and, now. And they do count a thousand hits. Yes, she manages a thousand hits, which is pretty amazing. Which is amazing is they counted those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, Kion asks if if uh, Yuki can do something in terms of like um, raining out. The, the, the yeah, thing. maybe we could rain it and have a forfeit from weather, mm-hmm. rain out the game. Yeah. Oh, but that will affect the future. Right. And it may disrupt the 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 climate of the planet. Mm-hmm. I mean, that can't be done. Yeah. Even though it's a little bit in well, the future. Here's what I find funny. Like, they're worried about affecting the climate 10,000 years in the future. But they'll let Haruhi, you know, rewrite History. History. Since you know, the past three years, right. she's making history. <laughs> <laughs> There's no history before her. <laughs> yeah, so something weird is going on. Oh, she's cute. <laughs> so Surya shows up. Um, this is one of the uh, uh, friends here, Mikuru, uh, one of Mikuru's friends from another class. And we've seen her in episode zero. She's a laughing girl. You just can't stop laughing at uh, Mikuru. <laughs> 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 Love that. Um but Kion has his own secret weapon that he brings over, which Haruhi is not happy about. Mm. Kion's little sister. So Kion's Imoto, uh, he, he brought her along um, as kind of his insurance card. Young girl, mm. young girl, age 10, <laughs> fifth grade. Perfect for taking on their opponent. <laughs> the college college, baseball, college team. baseball team, yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> we need... Nine people at least, right? <laughs> right. So Kion here is concerned because Haruhi being Haruhi can warp reality to make things fit. But there's no way she can do that with a 10-year-old girl on the team, right? <laughs> no way. Okay, yeah. let's see how that works out. <laughs> so then the game begins. And uh, rather predictably, Haruhi does well and Mikuru does not. She just kind of stands there. Yuki kind of stands there. Um, and we very quickly see what's going on. Yeah, I love Yuki, just her minimal movement for everything. <laughs> Basic. <laughs> Harry is pretty good, though. She, she's, she's good, yeah. She can pitch. She, pitch. she can hit. But she to that point. She can't exactly coach too well. Her, no. Her, 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 the way she coaches is <laughs> compared to worse than a senile <laughs> coach who doesn't know what he's doing, even. <laughs> Yeah, Haruhi is operating entirely on instinct. Secret weapon! But, his, but she has another secret weapon, which is cheerleader outfits. Cheerleader outfits. That which, works. Uh, yeah, Haruhi and Mikuru put on and uh, okay. certainly gets attention. Of course, Mikuru is. Huddle, huddle. I'm embarrassed. <laughs> and uh, Kion's happy. He, he, he's quite, quite content with this. Um, we actually see them with this in the opening credit sequence. This is an outfit from there. <laughs> so she, she tried to her arms. Okay, you're gonna push cheer, around. Cheer. And we get a little yeah, bit of Gynax yeah, bounce there in the, uh, with, with, with her. So the important thing here to, to note is that um, as good of a, of a pitcher Haruhi is, she is up against college students, and so she's not going to be able to manage a no hitter against college students. No, no. Um, they're just they're just too good. But uh, <laughs> the two of them uh, go to bat in their school, uh, cheerleading outfits, which manages to uh, it distracts 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 the opponents. Which again, it it, it works. Haruhi right. is Effective. managing. She, yeah, and this is what Haruhi does. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of reworks reality to her benefit. Leverage everything you can, and then a little bit of extra. Exactly. From... Haruhi has no shame. Let's just <laughs> put that right out there. So the game goes. So, yeah, so so Haruhi tries to signal Mikuru, despite them having no idea of signaling. They have no signals whatsoever. 
Um, yeah, she's but she has these bizarre waving signals. every which way and yes, making these lewd she gestures. Mentioned this to them beforehand that they were going to use signals, so nope. none of this means anything. Exactly. No. Nope. <laughs> like, Makes no sense. What is she trying also, to say? I also <laughs> love. And this is a great example of how Kyoto Animation really knows what they're doing where they just animate Haruhi doing this over and over and over <laughs> again, getting faster and faster and faster. <laughs> and you see the two other um, baseball players <laughs> just staring what at her. What is she doing? Just looking at her. And, what are you doing? And she just keeps on doing that and keeps on doing that. And uh, they just keep looking. And finally, they just, they just kind of walk off. Okay. <laughs> this girl's whacked. <laughs> the animation in general in this episode is is very impressive. There, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of action going on um, um, in an episode where you have a lot of different characters. <laughs> the, 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 the stretchy cheeks. Well, now, there was something that happened a little bit earlier mm. where uh, the Esper fellow, uh, yes. Kisuki, it, yeah. it mm -hmm. he, he, he threw a little bit of... Of, of of discontinuity into mm. my understanding. Yeah. Um, he mentions something that's growing, and yes. then we see a flash to a cut to something some sort of very entity strange. Yes. That had some ghostly corporeal form. I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a creature. An that, energy uh, creature. Of it some it sort. looked almost like I'm going to see if I can find a shot of that where where it was in the episode. Um, there was an expansion of closed space. Closed some space, of exactly. Are, um, are we getting foreshadowing of? Well, in a way. So this is again how things get kind of weird. Um, um, he's referencing something that happened previously in chronological order, but not in mm, broadcast mm, order. Exactly. So we we haven't seen that yet. I, I I should expect unusual things from an Esper <laughs> that, that may or may not make sense. Yeah. But when Kion seemed to understand and agree, that's when I thought, okay, well, maybe there's a difference mm -hmm. between the chronological and broadcast orders yeah. that uh, this was something that was an artifact of that mm -hmm. uh, uh, discrepancy. Yep. And again, I'm trying to find that moment, but it's not uh, showing up. But yes, so we, we see an energy creature that looks kind of similar to the... Um, um, the thing um, in... Well, I'm thinking of uh, Princess Mononoke. There's the um, uh, the uh, what's it called? The, the 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 spirit of the forest in its night form um, looks not unlike these things, um, which I think again is, is kind of intentional. They're kind of throwing it back to some uh, some classic Omar. stuff from yes from from Studio Ghibli and and, and such. Um, but yeah, so they they have some very interesting. Um, um, issues there. Well, now they 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 do really well in this game, but mm -hmm. why did they do well? They had some sort of a so, spell. <laughs> <laughs> so Yuki suddenly starts to, um, Yuki suddenly starts to speak very rapidly, and there's a a weird thing, where um, this is 2006 uh, version, so season one. Um, so Yuki suddenly starts speaking very fast, and there we go. And it, it's quite strange. The, um, suddenly, every pitch goes directly into Yuki's glove. They have suddenly, magically, gotten good. <laughs> Too good. Unbelievably Bizarrely good. Really good, yes. <laughs> very, very good. How is this ragtag bunch of misfits now <laughs> and, kicking butt? <laughs> and, I, and I love the expressions on everyone else. There she goes. Uh, I love the expressions Look on how all the fast other. That was. Yeah, she was saying something. Mm -hmm. And Mikuru refers to it as a spell, um, or as something like a spell. Hmm. But of course, what it actually is, it's classified. Classified. It's classified. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say. Um, and we here we see uh, again sort of a flash forward to something else that we hadn't seen yet. Um, but yeah, suddenly they're Whoa. all yeah they're all <laughs> awestruck. How how are these guys doing this? Everybody's hitting it way. Pass the, we're going to run out of balls. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to go fetch those? Yeah. Uh, so she hands over the, the thing. Bam. <laughs> it's like they can't miss <laughs> they can't hitting miss it over it. the fence. <laughs> <laughs> and so suddenly they've, they've made a whole bunch of runs. And um, they, they go up to, to bat. And um, it, it's pretty cool. It, it's working really well. Uh, and of course, the other team is like, "What's going? This is that strange. bat is beat. The bat is beat to pieces. Yeah, it's not even the logo that's making that mark. That's dents in it." 
And so Yuki goes up to uh, to that, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So, ah, uh, yes. So yeah. So this is actually, I mean, a, a, a good um, indication of kind of where the show is going. So. Up until this point, the stuff that's been going on with, with Haruhi and the SOS Brigade has been more or less normal. It's not normal anymore. She can't get bored for some reason. No. Boring is bad. Boring is bad. If she gets bored, the universe goes kabloom. What do you think happened three years ago? Maybe that's what happened three years ago, and that's mm. why nothing predates it. <laughs> she was bored. Mm. Boom! Yep. Yep. <laughs> Quite possibly. Wow. Because um, if 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 she gets bored or unhappy, apparently that affects the state of the universe. Yeah, yeah, and she seems to be more than human in that respect. That's, very true. Uh, although I've been bored and <laughs> I've affected the universe of people around me, <laughs> but not the entire universe. No. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean Haruhi needs things to be interesting. And if they stop being interesting, well, then she'll make them interesting <laughs> in some way, shape, or form. And that's that's kind of scary. So we have to figure out some way of making all that, of making things interesting. And that is the purpose of the SOS Brigade. All these people come together to keep Haruhi from becoming bored. <laughs> because that would be a very bad thing. Now, if I had a team of folks like that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So... Um, so Kaiser Dramon in the chat room is asking about the the broadcast order. So this is again sort of a confusing thing. Mm. In when when the show was originally broadcast on TV, it was broadcast in an order different than the sequential um, chronological order of the episodes. If you told it um, in the same order that they were in the original light novels, and it's not a random order, it's a very deliberate order. So you see certain things happening in a certain order. Um, but it's not sequential. So they hadn't come out with the DVD series yet Correct. before the broadcast. Correct. But they'd come with, out with the episodes. No. no. So they jumped in with episode three. Well, so they started with episodes zero, one, two, and three, I believe. Zero, one, two, and three. And then they jumped to episode seven. And then seven. And then I think ten. And ten. And then back to four. Ooh. Yes. It bounces all over the place. Did But had the studio not done the in-between episodes at that point or as i understand it they they made the episodes in the order in which they were broadcast so this was planned this was very much intentional that they were airing it in a different order because and and, and, and without getting into spoilers um because the show is about characters who um, where, where a lot of stuff Time happens. Time travel. Yes. Um, <laughs> because there are various secrets and information about the characters, Kyoto Animation, the studio, realized they can or, they can air it in an order in which some of those secrets can remain secrets longer. It's more entertaining if you mm -hmm. wonder, hey, yeah, don't let the cat out of the bag too soon. <laughs> and vice versa. But I always wonder who put the cat in the bag. That must have been tricky. I, I mean, yeah, who's yeah. this, this when, when have person you ever seen a who's cat putting cats in a yes. bag? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> ever try to put a cat anywhere? It never goes well. Yeah, they, uh, they have their own mindset on things. And, <laughs> well, and, and vice versa. Hmm. Um, showing an episode from later hmm. piques your interest. Say that. Oh, something's coming. Yeah. I can't know? tell what, but I know something. Why are those characters <laughs> suddenly doing that? When I haven't seen them anything like that before, um, so that is very much the 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 intention. I want that energy creature. I want to know more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and also, I believe I'll have to go back and check, but um, I believe they also went in and tweaked some things for the DVD. Hmm. So um, there are references in these episodes that weren't in the original broadcast. Um, um, I, I'm not sure about those dates. I, I think, I, I mean, it sounds, isn't 2009 season two? I think that's what happened in 2009. Um, I'm not sure now. But yes. So. Oh. Getting back to the episode. So, 
uh, yes. So I love how she throws the ball. She just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and <laughs> it goes so fast yeah. it knocks the glove off. And that's another actually good good point is how Yuki then tries to change everything by making everything um, making them all be able to throw much much better. In a sense, that's worse because suddenly they can throw things completely past somebody that they wanted to throw it to. I do now believe she there. there is an alien, there is an esper, <laughs> there is a time traveler. I do believe that now. <laughs> and again, this is one of the reasons why they, they picked this episode is because um, of other things that happen in between. But th you know, this establishes the fact that, okay, they're not just saying this to Kion. They're not just pretending. Kion's obviously. seen it in, in action. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, people who cannot hit, who cannot catch... Are doing it <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, this is certainly turning somewhat supernatural yeah. in that sense. So yeah, so here we have the, just the, kind of that hint that things are moving along in that way. Um, and of course, lunch is on. Kion. Of course, lunch is on Kion, but that's okay <laughs> because the other team inquired about that. Magical bat that just <laughs> never seems to miss. I totally uh, missed this the first time I watched. Um, the fact that uh, suddenly they have the bat. <laughs> How is it they have the bat and he has money? <gasps> oh, <laughs> they have the bat. He has money for lunch. He sold the bat. <laughs> and for all we know, it may still work. <laughs> yeah. <You know? laughs> they may clean up the championship effort <laughs> yeah, exactly. from here on in. <laughs> One defeat. <laughs> I, love, I love to find out about that. Maybe there's a reference to that in the original novel or something. But, uh, of course, Haruhi has more ideas, more plans. Next time, soccer, soccer or American, American football. <laughs> <laughs> for the team of five. I wonder if the... 10 year old sister is going to be involved in that. <laughs> Who knows? Oh. She, she she certainly is capricious in her in her interests. She uh, certainly is. <laughs> now, something I'll mention now um, is, and in fact, we'll, we can even see it there on the screen. Um, we, we mentioned already that um, Kion is, is his nickname. Mm. Everyone just kind of calls him Kion. It wasn't his first choice. No. <laughs> um, and we see on the credits that his little sister is literally called Kion's little sister. Kion's little sister. <laughs> <laughs> what are their names? <laughs> I just dropped my phone. Yeah, they've never mentioned Kion's name. They've never mentioned Kion's little sister's name. Isn't that weird? That is odd. Hmm. I wonder why that might be. Who knows? Yeah. So that is... This feeling bit is a warp and a loop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the phrase it definitely is. is the closing credit. Yes. I love the dance. Little... I've got to learn this. Ah, uh, the Hare Hare Yukai dance is is wondrous. Anybody wondrous out fun. there done the uh, done yeah. the dance? <laughs> Any of the cons or anything? I saw some folks doing that at Anime Expo low these many years ago. <laughs> I want to learn that dance and then see some spontaneous group of people just go into it, <laughs> then I can jump in. Yeah. <laughs> what would be even better is if that spontaneously happened happen somewhere away from a con yeah <laughs> <laughs> just random I, people so that that has happened when this show came out um uh particularly school girls would just go on the side of the road take a boom box and just do it in front of the camera um folks are just walking by you know, okay whatever that's nice dear a lot of fun all right, so moving on to Yamada's first time. Bear with us for a second here as we switch over. Ah, cables, cables. 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 The moon base comes equipped with its own Presto Changeo crew. Yes, exactly. I will hand this to you. Um, but um, yes, uh, uh, thank you, Liquidus. That is correct. You you reminded me of how it actually worked. Um, when they broadcast season two, they broadcast season one as well and interspersed everything in, in exact chronological order. So some things in season two happen um, in between the season one episodes. So they kind of gave us everything all at once. Then, of course, other stuff happens, but uh, that's spoilers for season two. Uh, do we need to turn on external? Um, no, you should turn on a uh, discovery. Yeah, it's not seeing that, but I think before uh, that had to actually go over to whatever it was and then this uh, discovered it. 
we're experiencing technical difficulties beyond our control. Loom base requires a little setup. Yep. <laughs> that way. Do do do. Come on, come on, come on. RGB. RGB. There we go. Let's bounce it in. There cool. we go. Yes, got All a signal. Right. Can I move this over here? Yes, I can. So we can actually talk about this. Yay. <laughs> All right. So this one I'll push forward maybe yeah uh, I, I hesitate to yeah to lose audio but this is fine this is fine okay good all right so okay. back there we still have audio yes check one two um so um kaiser german's question um uh the, the disappearance of nagato yuki chan is a spin-off set in a version of the universe that we see in the haruhi movie which Multiple is the disappearance universe. of haruhi susan mia um and yes, that is an accurate title. Um, um, it, it, it is quite literally a spinoff. There are ties back to the original world, um, but it, it's it's set in a world in which in which all the characters are normal school students. Oh, no espers, no, no time espers, no, no, aliens. no, exactly. Oh, um, so you can normal people <laughs> that's just my kind of people but still right <laughs> um so yuki is just a, a shy schoolgirl. um she she's not even as closed in as she is in this series she's just shy that's almost like a parallel universe and... exactly and that's, that's kind of how they play it it's, it's a it's a different um sort of way everything goes and um uh, ryoko who you've seen a, a, in bits and pieces already uh they're the very nice girl um uh is her best friend and she and and Yuki is secretly in love with this guy in her class named Kyon, hmm. um, who uh, and she's trying to figure out how to uh, sort of express herself to him. Just this sort of shoujo comedy. Oh. Um, I will say, if you guys are interested in it, again, it does tie back to the original universe. It's it's not completely divorced from that. Um, it is kind of a, an alternate timeline. I gotta um, check that out. It's it's fun. It, it aired this past season, um, and I think it's up on Funimation. Um, at least an episode is. So it's it's there. It's it's cute. Um, I may have episodes of it on here. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely say wait until you've seen other Haruhi shows before you see... Um, actually, I disagree with that. I'm going to disagree with myself. Um, Yuki-chan is um, pretty distinct. I don't mm -hmm. think you really need to see any, any other Haruhi. Because it it's... stand on its own. It's, it, absolutely. Because it is just kind of its own little universe, and you don't need to really know anything. Um, it's kind of like um, what would be a good example. Um, Doctor Who before his regeneration. That's a good example. <laughs> um, you know, if, if you went back and saw New Who, mm -hmm. you can certainly watch New Who without seeing any previous Doctor Who. But seeing the classic shows and the Daleks and all that kind of stuff really helps inform. It sets a framework where you can work from. And... Exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it kind of go either way. Um, Yes, exactly, um, Liquidus. It's, it's like Pretty Sammy. So Pretty Sammy sent it in, in its own universe using the Tenchi characters. So they have the same basic personalities as, as in the Tenchi universe. But, you know, none of all all the Jirai stuff isn't there. You know, it's, 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 it's a Magical Girl series. A hilarious and awesome Magical Girl series, but a very different thing. Yeah. Um, but yes, Liquidus, excellent, uh, um, perfect example. Perfect example. All right, so moving over to Yamato's first time penultimate episode. <gasps> We're, wow, this episode was so <laughs> packed, packed full of action. It was an amazing episode. Um, I, I barely had time to write notes. It was, it was so much going on. <laughs> Christmas time, Christmas episode. Yes. You're coming to my party. Oh, the, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, we should explain the difference about Christmas. I think we may have come up in earlier episodes because we already had a Christmas episode in, in Yamada. It's, uh, that's true. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, this is the second Christmas the episode. Second... Has it been that long with yes. Yamada? She still has not gotten anywhere. <laughs> They've known each other for a year and a half. Um, and so... Christmas in Japan is a much more secular holiday, as you can imagine, than over here. And it's much more of a romantic holiday. So think of it more like Valentine's Day. Uh, it's a day when couples go out, maybe buy gifts for each other and, and enjoy each other's company. 
Um, and it is also a traditional time when couples um, find quiet time together to enjoy each other's tender physical company, shall we say. <laughs> it's kind of traditional. So That sounds like a great Christmas present. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Kanajo decides, um, well, she doesn't really decide. They're doing a Christmas party. They kind of do that. And so she's going to invite all of her classmates. Including? Including Yamada and Misato and everyone else. Now with Yamada, she kind of waffles on whether mm. she's going to, and Yamada is like, <gasps> this, this is, I'm coming to your party. I, th this is probably my favorite um, uh, dialogue back and forth in this episode. <laughs> when Yamada realizes um, what's happening there, that this is the perfect opportunity for her and Kosuda to kind of get it on in a side room, um, <laughs> which I mean, fair enough. Um, uh, she's getting a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of drool. <laughs> so, uh, so Yamada decides, okay. So she she walks over. Then of course, the, yeah, you, you got to uh, let the butler know what you're gonna do. Which why would a butler care? I don't know. Uh, so he, he will facilitate the happiness of the couple. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Supposedly, I, 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 that's expecting a lot of this butler. You know, he's, his loyalties are probably to the family. Exactly. And not hooking up people or playing. A, <laughs> Matchmaker. So, so, so what is Kanajo's plan here? Like, what, what's she trying to accomplish with this? That's something that I kind of wonder about. Yeah. It's, it seems like her plans are a little bit more baked than Yamada's, <laughs> but not that much <laughs> more baked. No. Uh, her, her intention is to, well, she's, she's kind of divided. Mm -hmm. She, she has her, her, her feelings towards her brother. Mm -hmm. She has, her uh, distaste for Yamada mm -hmm. and her indifferent approach of using uh, 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 Kosuda? Kosuda as mm -hmm. a tool yeah. just to spite Yamada mm -hmm. and not really as a human being. No. Which kind of defies the sparkle approach of the family mm -hmm. that her brother is very uh, open about being... Uh, uh, his motives yeah. and honest. Mm -hmm. She conceals hers and has decided that she 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 wants to get what she can mm -hmm. the way she can, and so she'll use whatever tactics she has. Which, yeah. as we find out, uh, <laughs> she has some means to mm -hmm. uh, gather information, reconnaissance, Need. intel. Yes, through. Her family's uh, mm -hmm. mansion, she has multiple uh, images of herself, yes. paintings. Mm -hmm. But they're not just for self-flattery. True. They also serve a secondary purpose of hiding cameras. Yes. So she can spy on everybody and everything. Right. She has the big surveillance room where right. she can see everything in a fly's eye. So what's, so what's her plan here with this uh, with, the, with the party? Well, I, I thought she was going to... Uh, initially uh, take uh, 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 Kosuda mm -hmm. and uh, ruin it for Yamada by... Well, th there's that, but there's also the plan with Keiichi. So mm -hmm. it, it sounded like she wanted um, Keiichi to see that Yamada and Kosuda are an item. And, and then yes. he will give up his interest in pursuing her. Hopefully. Hopefully, but where can she go with that? Because it's still... Her her brother her brother how yeah. how, how she where is she gonna take that it seems like a half baked plan because very much so she even if she is successful she should she be the victim of her own success she can't go anywhere with it exactly very difficult um, spot for her to be in so uh, yeah so th this this leads to probably my favorite. Uh, oh the interaction interaction I've got in the mine, episode I've got, mine, I've, got um, mine. I've got mine too so um, th they're all kind of enjoying themselves and uh and and, and again Kanajo kind of has her moment where she she wonders is this the best plan is this really going to work do i really want to have yamada there do i want to invite her do i not want to exactly at which point yamada stalks over and says invite me to your stupid party invite me to your stupid party <laughs> and Kanajo says okay and just gives her the <laughs> invitation she was here she was cogitating you know, whether she should invite whether she shouldn't and then Yamada shows up and says, invite me to your stupid party. Okay. <laughs> uh, Solves the problem. Exactly. <laughs> so she invites Kosuda, of course. 
as she's chasing mm-hmm. her H carrot. <laughs> <laughs> and the teacher has to come along as a chaperone. Because there will be alcohol. <laughs> we can't condone serving alcohol to minors, but there will be other patrons, exactly. family members. Well, it, it, it's funny. This is we were just watching some Azmangadayo earlier today, <laughs> and you have the same you know teacher that maybe is not the best role model for students. <laughs> in that I'll be there <laughs> as a chaperone. As a chaperone, yes, of course, the chaperone. But. Uh, <laughs> so what 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 surprised me about this episode and, and um, well first off of course we have to point out the giant ice sculptures huge of... <laughs> as tall as the mansion on the mansion <laughs> unbelievable just the lighting alone would pay for a teacher's salary for a year yeah <laughs> <laughs> easily not to mention the sculpture itself <laughs> and so the, the party continues excuse me this place is huge. Oh my gosh. It's a tree that's <laughs> Where do they get these gargantuan <laughs> trees? <laughs> How do they get them into the house? <laughs> my gosh. Um and everybody is there. Yeah. All spiffy and mm-hmm. in their party clothes. And... <laughs> Misoto is so so overdressed. <laughs> it's <laughs> hilarious. And we were, we were talking earlier about how much we're enjoying how they handle uh, Misoto in this one. Misoto is kind of a little girl character. Um, who, Check her out. It, it's She's hilarious. So <laughs> She's so cute. And um, I mean, so obviously she is the lowly of the group. She is the one who looks the most like a little girl. And initially, I was a little worried about how they portrayed her character. Yeah. She's constantly going after guys. Even though she doesn't look as physically mm. mature. Her hormones seem to indicate that she's emotionally at that point where she wants to pursue guys and, with a passion. And she's in the same grade. And she's so she's in the same certainly, grade. certainly the, the right age. Um, <laughs> but what, what I appreciate is how she has both a childish um, attitude towards this, where she's just full of energy and she's just <laughs> very throwing herself into it, very optimistic, um, and clearly has done her research, talks about uh, do, reading all of those dirty mags. Are you really going to do it like they did in these? <laughs> these trashy magazines. <laughs> the love novels. And exactly. The trashy magazines. <laughs> but, um, but it's done in a way that isn't... Um, it isn't pervy. It, it, it's it, it's an honest, natural growing stage, and mm-hmm. it's not treated as something creepy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, she, so. she she wants to go out with a hot guy. Yeah, and 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 understandably, lots of lots of young girls want that older guy. Who exactly. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I I thought that was that was really adorable. <laughs> So then we set up the the basic issue of the episode. Well, of course, Keiichi makes his grand entrance as Santa Claus through the star at the top of the tree. Boom! He comes he out comes with out. a reindeer and sled appearing to fly How the heck through did he the do air. That? <laughs> <laughs> the the eyes is just <laughs> our hearts. <laughs> she just she just she latches onto him. him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she won't let go. Um, where am I? So, so so here's our, our first major sort of plot point of the episode. Uh, or I guess second major, where God, Yamada God. comes over. She, you know, Yamada wants to find out where to, you know, go off with Kosuda. And so she goes off and, and asks Kanajo where the secret room is. Where's the secret room? <laughs> wait, wait, what secret room? Yeah. Which, which secret room? Misunderstandings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I love how this is able to deal with Kanajo's creepy older brother room. Um, <laughs> and, and, and having that backfire... Uh, it, uh, <laughs> She's thinking, they found out about my secret room. <laughs> they had no intention of that secret room. They wanted the room where you could be alone and it was a secret. Right. <laughs> Not um, the secret room with the shrine to her brother. But, brother love. <laughs> yeah. But having a secret means that you are suddenly super sensitive to any mentions of anything unusual. It to mind, obviously. Exactly. They must be talking about that. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> so Yamada and Kosuda go off. They're gonna find their secret room. They're gonna find a secret room, and it's tough. They they, they find a library. Oh, it's um, too much like school. And, but I, I really like this um, this moment because they they have a, a quiet moment together, and Kosuda makes his move. He he goes yeah. over to Yamada. Finally, yeah. yeah. Um, We're gonna. The door closes. Spend time together. Exactly. Um, They're ready, but 
Yamada's not ready yet. Uh, but but again, he, I really appreciate this. Where he he leaves in for the kiss, she gets freaked out. She and, and she goes out and she and what does she say? It's too much. It's too. She she says, I don't want to do it here. It's too much like school. Hmm. What she would have said a couple episodes ago was, I don't want to do it. Yeah. She's giving him direction now. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah. as long as it's not school, let's go for something then. Exactly. <laughs> At least he knows where to go. He's got some path of, okay, she's just not hating me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you also notice how Yamada in general is is – much more there um, were a lot of pictures that she just passed in that there it, were um and they were they were look at them they're all the same <laughs> they're they're all the... eyes everywhere this girl yes is... <laughs> kanojo has a lot of paintings of herself um so we, we find out that kanojo has her secret her set her other secret room uh <laughs> with uh cameras and all of the eyes everywhere in the house and she finds out the next major misunderstanding of the episode, which we both just burst out laughing when we realized this. Um, so they're trying to find a, a room where they can be intimate. And the only room they find happens to be... The bedroom. Of Kanojo. So Her personal bed. Her own personal bed. Her own personal bed. <gasps> what does she do in yes, there? Oh. Yes. So they, 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 they jump on each other. Um, yeah, there's this great line um, where uh, 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 he says, I can't move. And she goes, he's not moving. What's wrong? <laughs> Again, oh my gosh. Just just so many misunderstandings. And uh, and they start progressing. <laughs> and, okay. okay, so it, it's obvious, you know. Kanajo <laughs> is sipping her tea. She's wondering where they are. Oh, it's where an could obvious they have gone? joke. I looked everywhere. Right. But she turns Except and does the spit take. <laughs> and the spit take <laughs> is still funny. Head. I don't know how. But you have all the places to be for them for them to do that. <laughs> and this is a huge mansion. I yes. mean, they put <laughs> huge trees and had no problem flying around the trees. Mm -hmm. the... <laughs> so so they start doing this, and we, yeah. we both enjoyed this moment where uh, Kisu, <laughs> Kisu, where uh, where Yamada says, "Don't worry, I've done this once before. I'm an expert." <laughs> it's not how it works, Yamada. Yeah, I, I kissed with tongue once before. I'm an expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. <Not> really? <laughs> it's like, oh, the yeah. eyes! Come on, did those eyes just move? <laughs> yeah, in that picture. <laughs> no, no. no. So it, I and, can't get the zipper open. And, and, and again, here's why I appreciate they're they're starting to get um, a physical, you know. Um, yeah, he he's trying to undress her. She gets embarrassed. But what does she do? She turns she around. She helps him out. Right. Oh, by offering he's, him. He's fiddling, trying to get the back, and he obviously doesn't know what it is. Right. <laughs> points it points it right to him. Which, yeah. Again, they're starting to actually communicate. Imagine that. So Kanajo. <laughs> Has to find something. Meanwhile, find <laughs> meanwhile, oh my gosh, he's got a little monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, she's so sweet. Oh, she's so sweet. He's got sweet. so much enthusiasm. She does, and he's just sitting there. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, you know, <laughs> Misoto is just convinced she's found her man, and he's she's, just not even seeing her. She's ready to um, marry him. Right. Okay, we're gonna sign papers. We're gonna get married. We'll be forever. And again, <gasps> here's where I appreciate where um, um, how how they portray that that um, um, they don't show Mis Misoto having her heart broken. Mm. They, they, they don't show her taking it. You know, she's obviously taking it seriously in the sense that she's very excited about this. But it's it's done so over the top and so silly that she's just you know um, throwing herself into it. Just not even they're not hearing each other at all. The, the, the communication is all one way, <laughs> one way. <laughs> and oh. so, yeah, so we, we, we come back and... He's and, gotten to the, to yeah. the bra. Yep. Of course, the, yep. the standard, hey, how does this how does thing this work? work? <laughs> but he gets it off pretty quickly. <gasps> oh, I'm surprised there was no nosebleed there. At that no point. kidding. That, yeah. that, that's, <laughs> for yeah. me, that's the nosebleed point. <laughs> <laughs> She, but she doesn't reject it outright. No, she doesn't. Absolutely. They finally, she, wow. she sits there. Uh, he, yep. She he, resisted. He, 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 he and he's grabs terrified. Her. Right. But exactly. He's, he's thinking. 
behold the key. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I, I, I appreciate how they're, they're showing that, the, that both of the characters don't really know what they're doing. Um, ah. But they're <laughs> kind of helping each other and guiding each other <laughs> and, and, um, and kind of letting each other do their own thing, if you will. <gasps> but Kanajo <laughs> shows up and then, oh yeah, that, that felt good. And she, she's worried about being expressive. That's but that's great. the last thing she should be worried about. It's great. She's finally communicating her yeah. how she feels, what she wants, what she doesn't. She keeps saying, I have to hold back. I have to hold back. No, I can't no, show no. him how if much she's gonna go is effective it is. Yeah. Which, and here's the other funny thing. I mean, you know, if you want to have sex with a hundred guys, you're going to have <laughs> to express, to express oh, yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, they've been wondering where they went to and this is the perfect excuse mm -hmm. to go and interrupt them. Right. I love how the best friend just opens the curtain. Yes. Just come on. Just just go with it. And of course There's we have nothing the, there. Right. Where'd they go? Classic hiding in the closet, the closet. situation. <laughs> um, <laughs> although they're clearly not in the closet, but they are of course hiding in the closet. Uh, <laughs> her, oh gosh, her, this scene. Oh, oh, oh. So when they find out whose bed they were in yeah <laughs> they begin to imagine what might be going on there this this is certainly the the most what does kind of joe do in that bed that we were just in oh has there been a kinkier image <laughs> there's, there's, in the show before this i'm not sure what that is she's holding i think it's I peanut butter that i that's what i was yeah some edible. So, so for those <laughs> who don't see the video, um, they're imagining what's happening, and we see Kanajo in a nighty, um, holding up a tub of something, encouraging a pet that's panting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, that's all we see. Let your imagination wander. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> um, wow, is all I can say. Of course, uh, 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 Kanajo. Kanajo is uh, he's 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 got different different things uh, hmm? fighting for for uh, his attention. Oh yes, like clogs <laughs> <laughs> that he's sitting on <laughs> that are pinching. Yeah, not exactly the most comfortable no <laughs> place to be. Um, but they're doing their you know they're they they gotta hide they gotta hide. Um, which leads to another great little moment um, where they, they have to... They've almost been exposed. Almost been exposed, so they have to redirect and misdirect. And, and so Yamada does it with a... Meow. <laughs> I'm a cat. I, 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 In the closet. <laughs> I, 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 I think you're actually being more realistic than Yamada was. <laughs> what was hers? Meow. <laughs> yeah, it was basically just meow. <laughs> meow. <laughs> So everyone knows friends, what exactly that, that is. That was Yamada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, get out. No, no, I'm not going to have this happen. And again, we see the... Yeah. <laughs> Their expressions as they're hiding in the closet. Great. <laughs> and so yeah, again, we see Kanajo kind of... Um, um, destroying her own plans as she goes and so sab sabotaging herself. Because the whole idea here was to get another witness to what's going on. Mm. But then as soon as she has an opportunity to show that off, hey. she pushes the, the person she away. She changes it, yeah. Because she suddenly realizes she doesn't want the public um, discovery of what's going on. She can't quite handle that. Yeah. Which, I, again, I, I guess I can How did she understand. find out about it? Well, because she's been spying on everybody. That right. can't go public yeah. because then they'll find out about... The, the secret room which somebody's been in. Which is very scary. It's been infiltrated by Miano, <gasps> who's been wandering around trying how? to find something. How, how, how does Miano? How find? do you get past the security? So Miano is clearly the Mihoshi of this series. She has just the most amazing <laughs> bad luck, um, but it is amazing luck in its own way. Luck and nonetheless. Luck ah. nonetheless, exactly. <laughs> um, and Miano, rather than being horrified, is impressed. She wants one just wants like one just <laughs> with someone different in it, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> whereupon, and again, this is kind of interesting, where Kosuda again steps up. And you, uh, uh, so Yamana and Kosuda sort of walk away, phew, managed to, to miss that. And Kosuda said, 
Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on. We, have, we still have time. Let's. Let, we have ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes. You know, do, do you want to keep on doing this? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it, it, it certainly yeah. is. And Yamada realizes, hey, yeah, but <laughs> not right now. <laughs> Conk. <laughs> not, not this second. We're gonna wait. We're gonna wait. A long time till tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but at least it's not a year. Yeah, it's, it's a... <laughs> They've made progress though. They sure yeah. have. It's, yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty awesome. Um, it's really starting it's to move somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then poor Misoto has come back with a forged marriage certificate to KG. I've got the license. I've got the paper. I forged it because <laughs> he didn't sign it. <laughs> Not gonna work. Sorry. Gonna work. Sorry, honey. No. So that is Yamada's first time. One more episode. One to more go. episode. Oh, it's over so quickly. Yeah. Yamada. She's going to be like a rabbit on this last one. Or... <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's going to make no, it. I, I think I, I'll be happy if she makes one. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. That's it. We'll see what happens next episode. Next episode. Cool. Uh, this is uh, Smoke and Mirrors from uh, Moon Base Beta. Beta. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>